with this idea of this climb for equality. If we sweep it out from under the rug, then we can actually begin to create a positive change for the future generations. It's some of the most fantastic climbing I've ever done in my life. Once we got higher up on the mountain, there's huge exposure on both sides. You're moving along this ridge line. It's the type of climbing I just love. From advanced base camp, you go to camp one, which is 23,000 feet. That's when you start getting on oxygen. And then you go to camp two, which is 25,000 feet. Camp three, 27,000 feet. And then to the summit, 29,000 feet. It was crazy because everybody on the mountain was moving to Camp One at the same time. So you could sit at the base and count the number of people going up through the North Pole route. And it was about, it was over 150 people that I counted. Okay, we're about to head up to Camp Two with hundreds of our best friends. So we get to Camp Two and then we have a tricky decision to make. Because we're at 25,000 feet and all the other teams are gonna move the next day to Camp Three, then to the summit the next day. So in the end, we ended up spending two nights at Camp Two at 25,000 feet. And it was super hard to sit there while every other team from all over the world was leaving to go for the summit. But in the end, it was the right strategy because the next day as the teams were moving from Camp Three to the summit, we were moving to Camp 3, and because there were so many people, there was just a ton of problems with frostbite and hypothermia because people were spending so much time above 8,000 meters in these long lines. So we're up here at 25,000 feet at Camp 2 on Everest, and one of the most common questions I get is, how do you go to the bathroom? So for number one, we have a pee bottle, and for number twos, we have what's called a wag bag. It's a bag you poop in. It's really not as bad as it seems. The only thing is when it's really windy out, like it is right now, you don't really want to go outside and drop trout. We're changing off the dip bottles, boiling water, getting ready for the summer. Going? I wasn't that joyous at the top because I knew I still had to go down. Once you summit, your goal is to try to get as low as you can in a day. So from the summit, we went to camp three, we packed up. We went to camp two, we packed up. We went to camp one, we packed up. We went all the way back to advanced base camp. So it was 8,000 feet of descent, and it took us 18 hours. One of the really cool things about this year on Everest was that our Western team was 50% women. But historically, and throughout other expeditions, that's just not the case. It's really rare to have such a high percentage of women on a team. About 11% of climbers on Everest are women. I think there's a lot of reasons, like societal expectations of women's roles, that keep women from making that goal and having the time and resources to train for it. I don't think we had a single woman um, on our Tibetan staff. And with our high altitude workers, they were 100% men. It's kind of hard to try to tackle all the whole global system of inequality for women. But I think by focusing on it through the context of climbing, it's a good metaphor to help lead this conversation about what can we do to support women getting to the top. And so, talking with Rob, we kind of collaboratively came up with this idea of this climb for equality. And what we wanted to do was invite men and people of all genders to become advocates for gender equality, and specifically women's leadership. Because when you look at who's at the top, you still see a huge absence of women not just on 8,000 meter peaks, in boardrooms, Hollywood directors, top chefs, you name it, most industries, it still is just a tiny proportion of women in the highest positions. We just really wanna keep the conversation going and really invite people to assert themselves as advocates for gender equality.